everybody. So um, today I'm in Inkscape as opposed to the GIMP, um, partially because I had kind of a frustrating time working with text yesterday uh, in the GIMP because the GIMP is really about photography and, and today's sketch is about text. And there's a particularly great tool in Inkscape for what I want to do and that's what this is really about is choosing the best tools for the job. So. Um, what I'm proposing to do is to illustrate a lyric from, uh, believe it or not, the new album from Radiohead, because I'm just in love with it. And um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import a picture of a magpie uh, that I just grabbed off of the web. And let's see if I can find it. There it is. So the first thing that you get when you um, try to import a picture is whether or not you want to embed it or link it. Because I'm going to throw the picture away, it really doesn't mean that much to me to embed it. It means more that um, I just link it. it. It really doesn't matter anyway because I'm going to delete it when I'm done. But embedding actually puts it into the SVG as, as uh, part of that file and linking uh, just points to the file outside of the SVG. If you were going to share it with somebody, the SVG, and they didn't have both the SVG and the picture, they would never see the picture unless you uh, embed it. So linking is a nice way to keep the SVG small. And here is the picture. I'm starting with a photograph, but I'm really... Uh, thinking that uh, the photograph will be not a part of the final image. The other thing is that this is a more portrait style uh, image than a horizontal image and so I'm going to uh, hit 5 on my keyboard to uh, show the entire picture. I'm going to size up a little bit. I'm also going to put the page border on top of the drawing, uh, which will give me uh, that outline, that I'm, the final outline that I'm looking for. Finally, I'm going to change my alpha number to 255, which means that it will go from zero, where it is by default, to 100% uh, opacity in white. I could make it red or whatever, but I'm going to make it white. And that means that anything that... Um, is not covered with objects in the final PNG will be white as opposed to transparent. Okay, so I'm done with the uh, dialogue here. You can see now this line, this edge of the page is over top of my image and it will help me to organize the image. I'm having some trouble at this exact second with uh, snapping and the snapping tools are over here. I'm going to turn off snapping entirely so that I can get a little bit more control over what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm going to trace bitmap. And I'm going to do an edge detection. I'm going to do an update. And I'm kind of happy with that. Let me do a brightness cutoff and see. No, let's do an edge detection again. I'm going to see if I can get the entire line come through. Let's actually go lower than the default 450. Yeah, there we go. That's good. So I'm going to close this now and I can delete my image. And I'm also going to go in and remove the uh, branch. So because this is vector, now this is made up of points, and I can just delete it. Like so. And delete it. Like so. So, 
appropriate, like so. So I have a general idea of what I want to do, but it, I, I don't have it all worked out in my head just yet. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new path. And this path is going to follow the edge of the magpie and hopefully look quite a bit like a magpie by the time I'm done. Uh, another method, if that doesn't work, is that I'll import a, uh, I'll take a piece of uh, text in a font that is birds and see if I can find something that's similar to a magpie. Okay, so I'm going to grab my Bezier tool and I'm going to make a line and I'm going to change the line to um, bright red. I'm going to increase the width of that red line. The way that I made it red was I held down shift as I clicked. Yeah, it's a nice thick line. So now when I make a line, it still retains that uh, original color. So let me, uh, here's what I'll do. I will take this line that's in the shape that I want it, and I'll zoom right in, and I will double click on the line and create the shape that I want. If there's a curve, I can always take it and curve it. And you'll see that even though I made a curve, the line is still remaining straight. The reason for that is that um, of the type of line that it is. So I'm going to go back into my Bezier tool, and you can see that it is using this uh, spiro path style. It could also be a straight line segment or a periaxial line segment. What I want is the regular Bezier path because it gives me the most uh, choice. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a path that follows this bird in a general way. Just following the body of the bird. Trying to get as much information collected about the shape of this bird as possible. without being ridiculous about it. You can see that even though I'm still using the Bezier tool, um, I can still move up and down on the page, for example. All right. There it is, and that is a complete path. So now I can hold down Shift, change that to this bright red color, change the size of the line to uh, larger so I can see it, and then use my node tool in order to make fine changes to this line to make it more like the original bird. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it just sort of has to look like a bird. And I want to have curvature. If there's too much hard edge, it really stops looking like a bird and looks more like a uh, robot or something. Okay. So now I can uh, hit 5 again, which takes me out of the frame. And I'm going to get rid of my original bird. Size this down a bit. 
and now I'm going to add my text. So the lyric goes, um, good morning, Mr. Magpie, how are you today? Uh, you took away the magic, stole my melody. Beautiful lyric, really, really interesting. And now that I'm looking at this, I actually think I might want it to go back to a landscape mode. Not exactly sure. So we'll take the magpie, bring it back down. Yeah, definitely what I want to do. And I'm not crazy about this foot here, so I'm going to uh, modify it just a bit. Add a uh, few nodes to make it more reasonable. So uh, we'll zoom out again, I'll hit 5, and I'm going to grab this object over here that I might need again, but in the event that I don't, I don't want to be staring at it. And I'm going to size this text down a bit. Just going to check for spelling, etc. And I'm going to select both the path and the uh, piece of text by holding down shift as I select. I'm going to go into the text menu and say put on path. And I am going to uh, go into the path menu and choose path effect editor. Which actually doesn't help me. Let's see. Let me increase the size a bit. Actually, more than I wanted. It's a little less than I wanted. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select this object, go to text, and say remove from path. And my text should show up somewhere if I go into. Uh, yeah, here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into here with the zoom tool, or I'm going to hit 5 on my keyboard. I'm going to double click on this, highlight it, copy it with a control C, go to the end, and paste it again, and see if it makes me all, it makes it all the way around this figure. So again, selecting my text, shift selecting my object, going into text, saying put on path, and it looks like I need it at least one more time. So I'm going to go into text, say remove from path, go and find it again by showing all objects, that's what this uh, icon is here move it back down, whoops, select away, click away, and uh, go to the end of this line, I'll zoom in to the end of the line, 
using the selection tool, double click again, and paste again, control V. And now I'll show all again, see how long that line is. I will uh, select both this and the object, text, put on path, and we'll go to five. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to uh, now undo because I know that the text is as I want it. I'm going to take the object and I'm going to change it to a very, very uh, light line, like so. Uh, because I don't really want to see it. I really want to focus on the text. As a matter of fact, I'll take the opacity of that down a little bit too. So it's so faint you can barely see it. And shift select my text. Go back to my text builder. Say put on path. And now, oh, look at that. It's actually remained separate. So, I can, for example, move that away and move both objects down. Show all so that I can get a better point of view. I wonder if I edit this now, if it will actually edit the uh, text. I bet that it will. Let me zoom in on it. Let's see what it did to my text. Yep, it looks like it's affecting it. So, I'm going to grab it, separate it a little bit more, go down, grab this path, get it off my page. I'll hold down shift as I hit arrows to move it down in a quicker fashion. too far there. Nice. So uh, just as a final touch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn snapping back on and I'm going to snap a rectangle to the background. Um, send this to the back and I'm going to apply a gradient. I'll do a radial gradient. Move this to the center of the page. I just double clicked using the gradient tool so that I could create a uh, stopping point. I'm going to make this rather dark, maybe not that dark. And I'm going to extend the gradient to the edges of the page. That's nice. Uh, finally, I want to take this and move it a bit off to the edge uh, because offsetting it like that creates a different kind of interest than having it directly in the center of the page. You know, it almost looks like there is some balance here or possibly even some imbalance, but an interesting imbalance if 
if such a thing exists. I'm just going to try something here too. I'm going to put in a uh, dark eye and see if that does anything. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring in my original image again. size it up properly and I'm going to whoops undo. I'm going to uh, do a rubber band select so that I can select just the eye and get it in the same place as the original photo was I'm going to get rid of this bird again See what it looks like, black. Yeah, interesting. I like it. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed this sketch. Uh, it's certainly a beautiful song. If you haven't heard it, go ahead and do a YouTube search on uh, Radiohead, Mr. Magpie, or Good Morning, Mr. Magpie, and you'll be able to hear why I was inspired to do a sketch about it. Thanks so much. Have a good one.